Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Crossing the Line. We're going to take a look at the story from Tim Cars today about those terrible fires they've had over in Maui, over in Hawaii, and some of the uh, deceptive things that realtors and uh, rich people basically are doing to these natives and doing to these poor people who've just lost everything in those fires. And the fires were a bit suspect anyway. I mean, there was a lot. There's a lot of questions that'd be asked about that. I don't believe they were made by any um, Chinese space lasers or anything like that. But uh, we can just see the massive amount of devastation, and there seemed to be a corresponding uh, failure from the local government and local law enforcement and local emergency services that just seemed to comprehend. Uh, compound on these poor people and just make the destruction that much worse now we'll take a look at this story from timcast hawaii locals worry maori rebuilding effort will push out natives government vows we don't want to be another example of people being priced out of paradise as of late august 13th nearly 100 people were confirmed dead following the inferno that quickly swept over the hawaiian islands of maui days prior i believe it's at least 111 people dead now the fire began as a brush fire which was reported uh, reported to the county of maui five days ago at 6 37 a.m according to the county's facebook page evacuations around lahana and an intermediate school were uh immediately ordered the fire crews were quickly on scene battling the blaze maui county declared the lahina fire which hit as firefighters were battling a separate wildfire the further east fully contained around 10 a.m but officials say there was a flare-up around 3 30 p.m fueled by strong winds from hurricane dora that blew up the uh, blew the fire so quickly it traveled the length of an entire football field in the rate of 20 seconds or less the fire forced more than 11,000 people to flee from their homes, having quickly to dro- uh, dive into the ocean to escape the flames. Hawaii's second largest island, known for its beaches and idyllic views of migrating humpback whales, is now a location of the deadliest U.S. blaze in more than a century. The Maui Police Department confirmed 96 fatalities on August 14th, but only 3% of the affected homes have been searched. At least 1,000 people remain missing. Ominous signs of the death toll could rise substantially. Now, just a note I did here today. Turns out the guy who was uh, running the police department and um, Mary Police Department there, sorry, was actually the guy who was running point on the Las Vegas shooting back in the day with Stephen Paddock. Just a little weird side note there, a little bit more of a... Uh, question to be asked as locals continue to confront the direct impact of the fire had on the city they simultaneously worried about another grave threat that rebuilding efforts will target affluent outsiders who will use the crisis to displace native hawaiians and local born residents richie pele 25 who was born and raised in lahana told the associated press that he was concerned of big land developers coming in and seeing the child land and opportunity to rebuild he said in a text message written at a shelter for evacuees hotels and condominiums that we can't afford that can't afford to live in that we're afraid of he added the fire depart- uh, the fire destroyed pele's restaurant neighborhood and possibly four bedroom home where he is paying a thousand dollars per month rent in a single room the ap reported as of june maui's county medium home was 1.25 million dollars up 13.6 percent from the same month last year median sales of prices condo units in the country hit 832,500 dollars and 30 at a 34.3 percent increase from the 620,000 median price in 2021 so a lot of more recent arrivals typically from the american mainland who have more money and can buy homes at a higher price percent to the exact uh, extent displacing local families from lahona sterling higer and the executive director for housing hawaii's future a non-profit organization that advocates for the housing in hawaii told the ap discussing how the town is subject to gentrification as they deal with the frustrating of the fires uh frustration of the fires insurance companies or firefighters the federal emergency management agency which many of them have well leave because they have no other options i guess said a tiktok account using the name lahaina fire updates posted a video of a woman who says the real estate investors are calling for locals residents in a bid to purchase their properties this is the disturbing this is the disturbing thing we've been seeing a lot of these people are getting phone calls after they've lost everything the only thing they have is the shirt on their back and the phone in their pocket and they're getting phone calls from people wanting to buy their properties already that is vultures circling a corpse that is disgusting that is tactics that i'm not surprised um i mean we can kind of see why they were uh why they would want to be doing that it's like a whole bunch of 
it's it's the, the picture of that house that you see like say on Gold Coast Main Beach and it's like an old Queensland old shitty old house that the old stubborn person has not sold that's what a lot of these communities were like it's they hadn't sold they kept their houses and kept their communities so that they could actually still live there because if they were bought over by rich people like uh, Oprah owns a massive swath of land over there uh, if they were bought by those people they would not be able to afford to live there so they're trying to keep their cultural and like heritage homes there and land but they're now being priced out and they are being vultured and uh, picked apart by vultures and this is just uh one of the tiktok videos here call my sorry had a little bit poor reception right there if you are a victim and they are calling you please get their name people keep calling me sorry get their business name so we can put them on blast this is some pilau heva shit happening right now i am so frustrated hearing since yesterday that multiple families that I know personally were reached out and offered money from investors and realtors shame on you shame on you now a lot of people think that these fires could have even been started to burn down these houses so they could buy the land back cheaper uh, that's a pretty bulk statement I mean we've seen how deadly fires can be here in australia and just how bad they are uh in canada at the moment as well it just seems to be uh, a lot of weird things that have happened with this fire i think one of the weirdest or saddest things yet is that joe biden president of the united states has not even addressed these people has not gone there uh he was planning a trip there recently but now he has just decided he's going on another holiday a man who has spent i think like 40 percent of his presidency on holiday is ignoring the victims of maui ignoring the victims of his own country and then sending billions and billions of dollars overseas to ukraine it seems to be the thing that all governments do they ignore the needs and wants of their own people and then send money overseas our government does it the uk government does it america does it it just the only countries that don't do that seem to be places like china and russia do they hate us i mean we're the ones that vote and put them in power i mean these people here probably a lot of them voted for joe biden or the democrats you know if they voted at all and they are now reaping the consequences of their choice i mean it's sad to say it's but that's what it is i mean if you vote for a dictator and you know what he's like and you've been proven that all these lies have come out and how much corruption there is you go and vote for that and then you go why is he not helping us it's because he doesn't care about you and you should have known that i mean a lot of politicians don't care about people anyway but you go and pick the one that's the least caring for their own people at least trump cared about his people or at least he pretended to i don't know if he does but at least he pretends to care if he does if he actually does care i wouldn't be surprised but even the pretending to care is better than nothing joe biden doesn't care joe biden doesn't even know where he is Governor Josh Green told reporters that he won't let Lahaina get too expensive for locals during the rebuilding effort. We want Lahaina to be part of the Hawaii forever. The AP quoted Green as saying, we don't want it to be another example of being, people being priced out of paradise. County officials say that Lahaina firebird 2,170 acres is the fir and as of August 14th is 80%, 85% contained. While a separate fire in Kalula, uh, Kula burned an estimate 678 acres and now 60% contained. Two other smaller fires were reported, but both were con uh, contained days ago. The county has also uh, has a water advisory in effect for Lahaina and Kula, and recommendations for only bottled water for drinking and brushing teeth, ice making, food preparation. Now, that's another thing that happened there. That apparently, the fire hydrants in Maui, they ran out of water. They could not get water to them. It's the uh, alarm system, the... Um, police chief there the emergency services person decided that they weren't going to be uh setting off the alarm system maui has the biggest and most advanced alarm system for things like uh, volcanoes hurricanes and tidal, uh, tsunamis and things like that and they decided that the, gov the government decided that they weren't going to use it to warn people 
I don't know if that would have helped anyone. Uh, there's not many places you can really go when you're on a little island like that and the fire is between you and safety and that's why these poor people were pushed into the ocean. And you see some of the... Um, yeah, you can see some of the... We'll have a look here. We can see some of the... Um, devastation there on the ground this is insane i mean look at like this it looks like a story out of an apocalypse movie or something like that. all the cars burnt up on the highway left there and they had nowhere to go there's there's footage of dead dogs laying in the street and it just shows you how quickly if you've seen any of the footage from there how quickly those flames come over and just torch that entire area and it seems to have left a lot of these rich people's homes alone. Lady Gaga, Oprah Winfrey, uh, Will Smith, their homes weren't touched, their properties weren't burnt. Uh, it's it's rife for conspiracy. I don't know. I don't know about it. But um, I did a story a few months ago about the Chinese space lasers from a Chinese satellite over uh Hawaii that were reportedly seen. It turns out the Chinese said that they were just monitoring uh, monitoring pollution in the atmosphere. That's what the lasers were for. But, I mean, the years we've had, the last couple of years we had, I would not put it, I would not put it uh, out of, out of reach for something like that to happen. But, um, I think the easiest explanation is that these were just terrible circumstances of events and that these people are using it to their benefit and they are going to be poaching all these properties and trying to buy these uh, multi-million dollar properties up for cheap while these people are suffering. And um, they will be left out and they will be left to their own devices. Joe Biden doesn't even care. He's sent them $700 per household. He sent... Uh, and whilst they've sending a hundred billion dollars over to Ukraine or whatever it is now, uh, more money we've spent in Ukraine than the entire time they're in Afghan uh, Afghan war. It's insane. It seems like these people have been forgotten and these people have been left out to, left out to dry. And um, this is what governments do. This is what the people we vote in do. Every time we need them, it, it happened here in Australia. There's still all those millions of multi, multiple millions of dollars that were donated for the fire relief fund here in Australia to places like the Red Cross that never got redistributed to the people who needed it. And we just seem to have forgotten that. And when it happens again, this fire season, when we have another massive amount of fires, uh, which is brewing up and it could very well be a bad fire season again here in Australia, it's going to be the same story and people will just forget and then they will just, oh, well, we'll just blame the Prime Minister and then he won't do anything like our Prime Minister Scott Morrison last time. He was over in, I think he was over actually over in Hawaii or Vanuatu on holiday while Australia burnt down most of the time. And uh, Biden seems to be doing the same thing. It just seems that they do not care for us or something. It's almost like they don't give a shit about the people that vote for them and don't give a shit about the people in their own country. But uh, who would have thought that'd be the case? Straight out of Canada, Justin Trudeau's new uh, misinformation laws and uh, internet rules have shut down anyone sharing any uh, news stories from the post-millennial there in Canada. Now, if uh, you didn't know Justin Trudeau was a fascist, it's pretty relevant now. Uh, it's pretty, pretty on the nose. I mean, if you shut down a media organization that you just disagree with... Uh, what else to say, but you're a fascist and you're a dictator. Now, Justin Trudeau, uh, not wanting to change tact, not wanting to be a better person, is following along the lines of his uh, family members like uh, Castro and shutting down anyone that disagrees with him. This is what we have to look forward to in Australia with Albanese's proposed misinformation laws on the internet. And this is what we will be looking at very shortly if they pass this bill, pass this legislation. We will not be able to communicate online unless it is deemed uh, sanitary and safe by the government. If you say something that they disagree with, you will be shut down, you will be banned, you will be deplatformed from places like Twitter, Meta, uh, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, you name it. 
it. It doesn't really matter what you say. If the government thinks it's misinformation, which is pretty arbitrary, uh, you will be shut down. You will be taken off, whether you're talking about anything to do with certain injections, whether you're talking about anything to do with government's bills that they're proposing, or anything the government doesn't want you talking about uh, coming up to the vote on The Voice, things like that. If they don't like you talking about it, or if they just want to pretend that you're fake news or fake um, or promoting misinformation, uh, they will shut you down and they will fine Facebook, Meta, uh, Instagram, places like that for not getting you taken down. So they'll either pull out completely and we will not have those services here available to us in Australia because what would be the point of them offering it to... 25, 30 million people when that's just the population of a large city in the US or, you know, places like Russia that don't even do these kind of things. Like, I mean, if we're getting to the point in Australia where you're not allowed to talk on the internet because the government deems it so and deems what you're saying um, unnecessary or misinformation, that's a pretty scary place to be when you consider like places even like China and uh, Russia aren't even that bad they (laughs) they have their own ways of doing these things and um north korea is probably the worst for it because i don't even know if those people have access to actual internet i think it's like an intranet where they're only allowed to go on to um certain government approved websites uh and china's going along the lines of the same kind of thing russia's obviously got their stuff going on but You don't expect to tie Australia into those countries there with uh, misinformation laws and uh, shutting down people talking about things that they don't want. But that's where we're headed in this country. And Canada has beaten us to it. And we seem to be following in their footsteps. So we'll have a look at this story from the Post Millennial. Post Millennial blocked in Canada as Trudeau's censorship bill meta ban goes into effect. As Meta begins permanently ending Canadians' ability to view news on its platform in response to Trudeau's Liberal Online News Act, readers of the Post Millennial have shared their frustration. Under the new regulations, not only are many Instagram and Facebook users unable to view posts that they can't even share them, the Post Millennial social media team has been unable to view its own content. However, they have been able to circumvent the ban via Hootsuite. As uh, official, welcome to Chinanada. Uh, Chinanada? however you want to pronounce it. I just attempted to reply to my friend's comment on my Facebook post with a link to the Post Millennial News article covering up a million pers- uh, covering the Million Person March, and this was what came up. Everyone will still rec- now receive this message if you attempt to share. News content cannot be shared in Canada. Wonder why he wouldn't like you sharing news content. It's official. Welcome to Trinidad. Anti-mandate activist Sean Richard wrote, yeah, Rickard wrote, just first attempt to reply to my friend's comment at the Facebook post with a link, post millennial news article covering the million person march. This is what it came up. There's an accompanying screenshot Rickard told by Facebook that the news content he shared cannot be shared in Canada because of Trudeau's liberal legislation. Everyone will now receive the message if you attempt to share news stories slash articles on meta platforms in Canada, he added. Has anyone else experienced this on their social media platforms in Canada? Time to wake the hell up, people. Now, you can see Jordan B. Peterson's uh, tweet there as well. Rickard Post caught the attention of Jordan Peterson. Sounds like a good time to divorce, he quipped. In the statement released on August 1st, Meta explained in order to provide clarity to the millions of Canadians and business uh, businesses who use our platform, it has begun the process of ending news availability permanently in Canada. Meta accused the Online News Act of being based in the uh, incorrect premise that tech companies benefit unfairly from news content shared on their platform, noting that the reverse is actually true. Conservative Party leader Pierre Polaveri slammed Trudeau over the recent development, saying they were more like uh, 1984. Who would ever have imagined that Canada, the federal government, would pass laws banning people from effectively seeing the news, he asked. Who would have thought that would have been the government would pass the law to manipulate the algorithms of the internet so that the prime minister only sees what he wants them to see? That is a scary truth and reality that's coming closer to us here in Australia. If it's happening there in Canada, if it's happening in the US, it's even happening uh, where they have a Bill of Rights and they have free speech. We do not have that here in Australia. If it is happening there, it will happen here. If people don't rise up and stop these uh, government officials from pushing these legislations, Albanese government pushing this kind of crap forward and banning us from talking about things they do not want said, 
we, it's going to be too late. You will not be able to leave your home or you will not be able to say anything outside without getting fined, harassed by the police or the government or something along those lines. You could very well just lose your job uh, from saying certain things online. You could very well uh, lose your livelihood. You could lose a lot more than just your job now. If these things are getting pushed and it's going to end up like what it is in England, if you misgender someone on the internet, if you say something that they don't deem um, politically correct, you can be fined and or put in jail for that this is coming to australia this is somewhere we were at the precipice now that if we do not do something about it now it will be too late because you will not be able to talk about it once this bill goes through once this legislation's in you it's too late then you will not be able to talk about it because the government will just deem that it's misinformation that you're saying and you will be banned off of social media you'll be taken down your posts won't be viewed uh whatever it is the government and the facebook meta and things like that will see to it that you are silenced this is deadly this is dangerous this is joy George Orwellian 1984, like it says there, is is terrifying. And if we do not stop it now, if we let this go through, we will be paying the consequences of it. Our children will pay the consequences of it because they will grow up in a world where you are not allowed to say something true on the internet. You are not allowed to say something true in public. If it is deemed misinformation by the government. We've seen over the last couple of years how hard they railed against people talking about the truth. And even just having an idea, having an idea that didn't go, uh, that went against the mainstream narrative and just see how much people were attacked for it. We had pregnant women getting dragged out of their house in handcuffs here in Australia because they said that they were going to a rally or they said they might attend something like that when it was illegal to do so here. And uh, they hadn't even broken the law yet, but the government decided that they're going to walk into their home and arrest them for saying that they might do something. We have seen it here in Australia. We're seeing it there in Canada and America. It's happening. England is too far gone. Uh, they are arresting thousands of people a year on misgendering uh, people or say, uh, offending people online, basically. Uh, you've always got that um, famous case of Count Dankula who taught his dog to do the Nazi salute to the uh, words gas the Jews, which was quite bloody funny. And uh, he went through hell for it. He's, he's, um, he's made him famous, but he is still suffering the consequences of that uh, going through the court system. And I believe he's uh, nearly, fa he was facing jail time over it. Um, but that's that's in Scotland. And um, you th kind of think that the free world and the world we live in with Canada, America, United Kingdom, Australia, places like that, we like to think that they're free. We like to think that we have freedom of speech and it's just getting proven every day that that is not true. We need to lock this down. We need to be able to make sure that we have our rights and our freedoms, the little that we do have left. You cannot sit on the sidelines anymore. We need to actually actively get out there and do something about them. I don't know if we can sign a petition. We can go and uh, talk to government leaders, uh, tell them that we do not want this. Get out there and talk to your friends at work about it. Talk to your family. Let them know how dangerous this is. They might just think that, oh, you're talking about flat earthers and things like that. But if the government is out there putting out misinformation, it turns out that they were spreading a lot of lies and a lot of misinformation over the last couple of years. They are exempt from this rule. They don't They don't print out misinformation according to them. It's only uneducated masses of people like, I don't know, everyone who's not in government. We had doctors getting shut down over the last couple of years. We have scientists getting shut down for saying things that are true and that are proven to be true now. And we're even theorizing things that were proven to be true now. And common sense things they were saying over the last couple of years. Uh, and they were getting shut down. Now, this is that kind of totalitarianism, that kind of censorship. This is turned up a notch. This is so they don't have the... Um, they don't have the guise of having a pandemic and saying that they're protecting people or saving people's lives anymore by shutting this free speech down and stopping these people talking about these things that could hurt someone, which was what their ruling was over the last couple of years. They don't have that anymore to use as a bludgeon, to use as an excuse. So they are just going to legislate it 
to make sure that whatever they deem necessary for us to hear, we will hear. Whatever they don't deem necessary for us to hear, we will not hear. And if you say something that goes against the uh, Communist Party guidelines of the Albanese government, you will be shut down, you will be banned, you will be fined, and you will be taken down off the internet and you will not have a voice. The worst thing about this is people who cannot be heard scream. People who cannot be heard when they're screaming start throwing rocks. And we've seen it uh, with protests over the last couple of years. When people don't get heard, they step up their game. How far do we have to go in Australia? How far does the government have to go before we step up our game and make sure our voice is heard so that they cannot ignore us, so they cannot lie about us, and so they cannot ignore the facts that we are showing them now. And I think... Australia is very slow to react. I think we have a massive issue here in this country with she'll be right attitude where it's like over the last few years we saw that and uh, a lot of people seem to have forgotten what's happened. They just want to move on or they have a bit of PTSD or they just honestly don't care the way they treated half the population here in this country. But they seem to forget too quickly here in this country and we seem to have this massive problem with that she'll be right it's it's not going to be right it's you we have freedoms now and we're losing them we're getting sold out every day to china we are losing any right to say anything we want to we are losing rights to our own children in this country we're losing rights based on our race skin color and anything to do with like international um affairs we're losing rights there we've just signed a deal with uh California, Australia's just on to deal with California, to uh, share going green and combat climate change. So now we're going to be dictated how we run things in this country by a leftist Californian state in America. Not alone there, uh, we are dictated to how we run this country from China because they pay the bills here in Australia. They pay the politicians. We are getting run by other countries and there's nothing we can do about it now because it's too late. We have let it go from being a uh, piece of legislation to being put into practice here and we just kind of shrug it off as she'll be right. Too many people kind of shrug it off as she'll be right, mate. And I know a lot of people that uh, live in places like Victoria that do not see the issues with their totalitarian communist dictator Daniel Andrews that they have down there and they kind of just shrug it off as a no well we could have a lot worse it could you know he's not that bad he you know he may do these silly things but it's not all too bad because my day-to-day life hasn't changed they kind of forget that they were the most locked down state the most locked down city in the world for several years and they had to raise children through that He's now banning things like your use of chainsaws in national parks. So the RFS can't even clear fire trails ahead of fire season. Little things like that that are going to come back to bite them in the ass. And then when that does, like that specific thing does come back to bite them in the ass with a fire next year or later on in this year, um, they're just going to blame it on climate change and then make their rules accordingly and then you know, get rid of gas stoves, like they've just done that in Victoria, gas appliances, and they'll just say it's because of climate change. So then they'll double down on their efforts to their agenda, whatever their agenda is on the matter. It's uh, whether it's selling out to China down Victoria or going green, those kind of things. We need to band together now, talk about it, tell everyone what's going on, look into these legislations, look into the news stories, and make our voices heard, we will not be silenced because if it gets to the point where we cannot talk anymore, we will start shouting. And if we start shouting and we are ignored, we will start throwing rocks. And sometimes rocks are made out of other things than rock. They're made out of lead. They're made out of Molotov cocktails. And for Australia to get to that point, it will be pretty hard because there are so many sad, lazy people in this country that do not want to work, that do not want to stand up for their own rights and are happy with the boot on their neck because the boot on their neck gives them comfort, gives them warmth, gives them some sort of, well, it's not up to me. I don't have to worry about it. It's uh, up to them above me and they lose any sort of freedom, but they they keep that... Um, keep that totalitarian dictators 
like a blanket of warmth and security and they love that and i think that's a massive problem here in australia we can see that coming up with a voice talk to anyone about it and they want to vote no i haven't i haven't i think i've talked to one person that would want to vote yes and they weren't even sure about that every other person i've talked to doesn't know does not want to vote yes they just want to vote no and i think that is going to be a resounding no when it comes through in the vote but I also worry about the mass unwashed population in places like Melbourne, Victoria, Sydney, Perth, Adelaide, the major city hubs, uh, who have no idea what's going on and they just think that they're going to be voting for um, making Aboriginal people happy or something like that. It'll be like the um, the biggest lie ever told of the country. Well, second biggest lie. <laughs> but... Um, what do you guys think anyway? Let me know in the comments down below and please look into this uh, look into this misinformation bill that we have here in Australia and we can see where we're going in Canada, in America and in um, places like New Zealand even and the UK where that has led to them and just jailing people and we can see where it's going to be leading here in Australia. So we are winning the culture war. We are gaining ground against the leftist loons. Rich men north of Richmond hits number one on Apple charts. He has struck a chord with America. Fox News uh, here. Many liberal media outlets have been out of touch with Americans after labeling a viral country song called Rich Men, North of Richmond, a right-wing conservative anthem. Despite the labels, a viral song has topped music, Apple music charts, even surpassing country singer Jason Aldean's hit, Try That in a Small Town. Now, uh, this fella here, Oliver Anthony, uh, brought out a nice little country song the other day where he basically talks about how the rich men, North of Richmond uh, in West Virginia, are controlling the country and basically doing everyone else in the country a disfavor. He goes and talks about uh, things like Jeffrey Epstein's Island, um, things like that in a tongue-in-cheek kind of way, but it's a really nice, well-sung song, a nice uh, bit of guitar playing, and the left has lost their shit over it. They cannot cannot be uh, quiet about anything because someone come out and made a mildly political song uh, on the right side of the spectrum. Even I think this guy's a middle uh, middle ground kind of person. Um, they are losing their shit. They're attacking this poor dude. He thankfully is going to be now hopefully a millionaire and his song has blown up that much. I think it was like 30 million views or 20 million views last time I saw it on YouTube. Uh, I don't know what he's doing on Spotify or anything like that, but his uh, whole catalog that he had is blown up and he is now set for life. He has made it, this fella. And it just goes to show the cultural divide in the States and around the world at the moment between the left and the right and the middle ground is only ever increasing. I mean, we could see the massive um, boycott on Bud Light there in America and just how much money they've lost, the massive boycott on Target, um, the, the amount of money they've lost. It's uh, it's good to see that we are gaining ground against these nuts who want to uh, diddle kids and push their LGBT propaganda and um, pretend that we're racist for just saying that, that we like a song. I'll continue reading this story here from Fox News. Many liberal media outlets will appear to be out of touch. Uh, we'll go back here. According to the media, the vile right wing anthem is offensive. It's fat phobic and controversial. It's championed by the right. It's obscure. He punches down. I can go on and on, but I mean, how out of touch can you be? Co host Kaylee McKenney asked on Outnumbered Friday. Red bearded high school dropout Oliver Anthony song Rich Men North of Richmond has been viewed more than 21 million times on YouTube as of Friday afternoon, serving as both a screed against the Washington greed and a lament for the working class ills like suicide, despair, high taxation and working long hours for bullshit pay. Oliver Anthony has turned out $8 million offer since going viral. Uh, many immediately resonated Anthony's song with sentiments that he shared, strumming his guitar. Some fans shared personal stories of what the song meant to them. One person res uh, responded to Radio WV's uh, video saying, I'm 39-year-old Iraq war vet, construction worker struggling like a dog to take care of take care of two kids and keep a farm going when i'm not working 11 hour days this hit hard so this hit so hard today i just stopped my old peter built and tear up preach brother 
Another person called the song an anthem for 80 plus million Americans who have been smeared, ignored, mocked, slandered, and robbed by their own government. This is one of the reasons that he said he wrote the song was not sh- uh, not for fame, not for glory, but he was feeling a sense of mental illness, depression, anxiety because of the state of our economy and so, so many Americans resonate with that. Fox News medical contributor Dr. Jeanette uh, Nishwhite said that he... Uh, on Outnumbered Friday. This is why he shut up number one because he understood and acknowledged the pain and suffering, the struggling so many Americans have been dealing with on a daily basis. He is a voice for all those who aren't able to express what they're feeling, what they're going through in an able way uh, and able to say, we need change now. Now, this is fantastic. This dude's songs hit number one. Uh, even Jason Aldean's song hit number one for a while there. Uh, anyone that's coming out on the right or uh, middle ground that's not leftist controlled media and music industry, when they have a hit, it helps everyone. It's um, creating a dual economy. We need to be able to give people like this that agree with us money. I'm sick of giving people who hate us money. I don't want to give Disney money. I don't want to give Netflix money. I'd rather give it to people like The Daily Wire or Tim Cast and places like that. I'd rather promote uh, small people who have their head screwed on right and aren't trying to shove some sort of LGBT leftist doctrine down our neck. I mean, I don't want to raise kids in a world where everything's turned right versus left but that's what it seems to be is we need to start making our own industry we need to start making our own content we need to start making our own music we need to start making our own platforms where it's even if it's getter rumble uh x now uh we need to start something like uh an alternate youtube like uh, odyssey's pretty good but we need somewhere that if we give the money they don't just throw it back in our face and use it to make us look like a villain and uh, that's why i think oliver anthony here is blown up besides being a good song in general obviously not a massive country music fan i mean shirt here but uh anyone that is sticky to the man i mean i remember when rage against the machine used to sing songs about Rage Against the Machine, as their name would entitle. But they are the machine now. A lot of the... I mean, they're communists, but a lot of those bands that are like anti-politics or, you know, anti-government, and that they've gone the complete other way. I mean, you've got uh, people like them forcing vac- uh, people in their crowd to go and get vaccinated before they can come to their show. Dropkick Murphys, I think, were threatening to fight Trump supporters who went to their show or something like that. I mean... You're not really rock and roll. You're not really cool when you're out there, you know, being part of the government and being part of the machine. I mean, look at Midnight Oil, for God's sakes. Peter Garrett, I mean, the, the beds are burning. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, we know what he we, we know what he thinks anyway. But they go and feign and pretend and they make their money off of selling that they are, you know, anti-establishment, anti-government and... Um, pro worker or you know but they're not these people have sold out years ago so these new up-and-coming stars like this guy uh, are fantastic if there's um other people out there that you know of that are along the same lines that don't hate everything you stand for go and promote them wherever you can because a lot of these people in the media industry music industry um, movies television whatever it is they hate everything about you. They hate everything that you stand for, and they don't care about your money. They'll just take your money anyway. We can see that with the Dis- uh, Disney movies they're bringing out now. We can see that with like things like Rachel Zegler saying about the new Snow White movie that it's a white supremacist and alpha male and blah blah blah. It's um, some little Mexican chick like her who's got like alcohol uh, what is it alcohol fetal syndrome whatever it is with the eyes way too far apart i don't know what the fuck's wrong with her but she goes and says all these nasty things about people who grew up watching snow white and um now it's snow white or snow beige and would it be off colored cream white and maybe the seven minority hires i don't know but it's definitely not what it used to be it's definitely not an old german child uh story it's um they're taking everything that you loved cared for and grew up with and turning it against them and saying when you disagree with their artistic choice on the matter they call you a racist a bigot a homophobe you name it pick one they'll call you that and i think this is why people like oliver anthony here has blown up so much because it's 
hard to find a genuine person who speaks the truth, who doesn't hate you when you're on the right-hand side of the spectrum politically, and they just tell it like it is. I mean, he also talks about working so many hours and people on welfare taking all of his tax money when they don't need it. It's true. I mean, how many hours a week do I have to work just so some dull bludger can buy a new Commodore or go and buy a six-pack of VB and a fucking... 10 pack of white or a 20 pack of white ox it's um it's sad how much the, the people attack us for just saying the truth it's like no we don't like dull bludgers no we don't like lazy people who take shit from us for granted we aren't supposed to be living in a show- socialist country but australia is getting worse and worse america's getting worse and worse as well I mean, I don't mind helping people out when they're in need. I mean, everyone's been in need at some point. We've all, you know, been down. I've been homeless at one point when I was younger and, you know, I needed help. And I wanted to get into the work, in, get into work and start earning my own money and making my own way. And I don't like scabbing off people. I don't understand how these people, I know a bloke that's 32 years old, that's only ever had one job and he's only had that job in the last two years and he couldn't do that. He was a fucking burger flipper at Macca's and he couldn't handle that. He's now a stay at home alcoholic who just abuses the rest of his family because he has mental issues and he's too lazy to wipe his own ass, this guy. This is the kind of people that want shit for free. They demand it, they want it for free, and they expect it for free. And these are the kind of people that are resoundingly left. They kick up a stink when you call them out for their laziness and their fucking patheticness and communistic traits. And this is why they're attacking this Oliver Anthony guy so hard. Lucky for him, his spiral has been turned into art so that an authentic and people uh, people really, really identify what he's saying because he's lived it, Fox Business Kennedy said. Fox Business Dagan McCow said that, uh, Medow said that the song resonated with her even more because she was born and raised near where Anthony is from. She noted that the music even more, the lyrics impacted her. What connects folks with me is it's not the lyrics, it's not the actual music. A man playing a resonated guitar can also be played on the side or Dobro, he said, adding that Aldean's song did not just resonate with her the same way. When he says, living in a world with a new, with an old soul, the truth of these words are that the music that he's playing is the music born in front porches and born in churches, up in the mountains, up in the hollers, and is made for, by some big, some big country, and is not made, sorry, by some big machine down in Nashville being shoved down people's throats. So go listen to Doc Watson, go listen to Bill Munro, go listen to Ricky Skaggs, and you will know why this man is connecting with you. Now, if you guys like country music, if you don't like country music, I'm not a big fan, but uh, this song really hit a good note, and uh, all all props to him. This guy is doing his thing, and now he's getting attacked viciously by mass amounts of media and the leftist propaganda. So go out there, buy his song if you can. Uh, at least go and watch it a couple of times, see what you think about it, share it around, get people uh, get people out there listening to his music so that people who have the right, right agenda or even no agenda, like this guy seems to have just want to write a song about what he's going through and he's getting attacked for it. So get his stuff out there, promote anyone that's doing things like that, like him, like um, post-millennial uh, Tim Cast, uh, people like that, that are fighting the culture war, promote their stuff, get it out there so that we actually gain ground in this conflict because it is a conflict and we are losing every day. We have lost all of our movies. We have lost most of our music. We have lost most of our television shows, if not all of them. And we are getting shut down constantly for voicing our opinions and saying that we don't like some things. I mean, if you don't like the way that they made Ariel Black in Disney movie, uh, Disney movie, if you don't like how they're making the seven non-binary, I don't know what they're called now because they're not dwarves. If you don't like that, then people call this a bigot. People call you racist. But maybe it's just that you don't like your culture and you don't like your heritage getting deleted and then turned into some sort of LGBT rainbow trash. I don't know. What do you guys think anyway? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll see you guys in another episode. Don't forget to leave a like, share and subscribe to the channel. Comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.